off of the very first Hustle and Shine show. I see y'all in the studio. Thank y'all so much for joining me tonight. I am so hyped and so excited. First off, I just want to thank everybody who's continued to share the pose, heighten the momentum, really get behind the Diamond Writers. This platform means so much to me. As y'all know, I had to let go of my baby, her say. It was a great th three seasons, but it's really time to step it up and align all of my brands. And so here we are on the Hustle and Shine show. I got a great guest coming in to talk to us later, but I first wanted to get started with a couple of shout outs. First off, got to shout out my husband, who's also playing engineer for me tonight. Uh, always supportive. And so I got to show him some love and say thank you who's showing up in the camera right now. I also want to give a shout out to my cousin, Camille of JK Fashion Closet for this dope t-shirt that she made. I don't know if y'all can see it, but it says Queen B. Nope. Trap Queen. Nope. I'm the queen pant. This shirt is so hot. So if you have a t-shirt need, any type of brand need, honestly, she can brand anything. Make sure that y'all go hit her up. That is JK Fashion Closet. Or y'all can also reach out to her through her magazine, Full Bloom Magazine, both available on Facebook and Instagram. Also need to quickly shout out my dad, Kevin Harrington of KHX Music, who is the creator of that dope ass intro y'all just heard. I'm sorry. I was hype. I was over here dancing while it was playing. And to my godfather slash uncle of uh, New City Edits who created the imagery for me. So a lot of people getting behind this movement and I'm so excited. One of the things I want to talk about that's important to me is womb wellness. Um, for those of you who know me personally, I struggled with um, cervical issues for a long time and it was a devast devastating journey. And so my girlfriend, Javon, who's going to join us later, she got into womb wellness and started to teach me different things and send me herbs and just all of these things that helped me to heal holistically. And so that's why I chose to kick this show off with her as my first guest. Taking care of ourselves is the most important thing. I don't care what you're doing. If you're building a brand, if you're building an empire, if you're building a family, you're no good to none of that if you're not well. And so that's just one part of our wellness, ladies, but it is an important part. Um, I had some statistics written down about cervical cancer and ovarian cancer, but I was like, you know what? I'm not even going to bring that kind of energy. We're going to keep it on a high note, but we are here to educate, to enlighten, and to inspire. And so that's why I'm going to have her on. Before I do that, though, I want to let you guys know that I got my wine out because it is Wine Down Wednesday in my diamond glass. If you would like this glass and a copy of Pretty Broken, we are giving these out tonight. In order to get it, though, you got to share this live. So I want you to share the link and then comment live in the comments. I mean, shared, sorry, in the comments. And then later tonight, I'm going to pick one, maybe two winners. So again, share the link. I'll give y'all a minute to do it. Mm, that's good, babe. Ooh, that's real good. Y'all share the link. Share the link. Y'all know people. Come on, share it. Get some folks on this live. Comment, shared. And then later this evening, Javon and I are going to pick two winners for this glass and a copy of Pretty Broken and a couple of other little dope items that I've thrown in what I'm calling the Hustle and Shine Wednesday Wind Down gift box. So make sure that y'all do that. All right, I don't wanna waste no more time because I'm excited that my girl even cleared her busy schedule to chat with me tonight. I really want her to be able to drop some gems and give y'all some information that's really gonna help you, give you some things to think about. Cause I know I never thought about this until she started to really study and started to become an advocate in this space. And so I really wanna bring this to y'all. So without further ado, I'm gonna bring in my girl, Miss J. Vaughn. What's up, mama? Hello, hello, queen. What's Hi, up? What's up? Oh, listen, I'm so excited about this conversation. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> listen, first of all, I have to thank you for serving in this space, right? You know, when we think about entrepreneurship and we think about branding that's going to tailor and cater to women, we always go to fashion. We always go to makeup, which is not an issue. Right. We go to right. hair. We need, those yes. right. we need those things too. But <laughs> nobody was really filling this space. Nobody was in this medium. Right. And you taught me so much. Oh. Like seriously. So first off, please, Queen, introduce yourself to my audience. Let them know who you are. Who is the guiding light? Your guiding light. Who is that? And tell us more about your business. Absolutely. Well, first of all, let me say hello to the Diamond Riders. Y'all have a special place in my heart. Yeah. Um, hello to the Hustle and Shine platform. Thank you so yeah. much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. 
I am Javon A. Frazier, also known as your guiding light. And all that simply means is that I go through things because I'm human. Uh -huh. And then I shine my light and help you along your journey, right? I'm an author. I'm a speaker. Um, I am the owner of the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, and I am a womb wellness advocate. I'm all about helping women connect to their uh, womb space in order mm -hmm. to heal ourselves so that we can heal our families, our communities, and eventually the world. Yes. All right, cool. She froze. Oh, no, she back. Okay, there you go. So oh, okay. tell us a little bit more about your boutique your services, um, you know, some of the holistic herbs and how, how the whole Yoni steaming thing works. Absolutely. Absolutely. So the hidden jewel, well, and y'all, I'm just be honest and transparent. Cause I'm like my sis, I can't never find glasses that fit my face. So if I keep going like that, y'all, please forgive me. I'm we working <laughs> on it over here. <laughs> this family, you fine. Look, you know, I got, you know, I gotta be honest. Like, yes. You know. So the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique is um, a luxury wellness boutique and Yoni Steam Spa. And let me just pause and say that we are the first in Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. Let's yes. go. Let's go first. Yes. <laughs> um, so essentially, you know, we help women connect to their divine feminine energy. And which, you know, that just means like their higher self, right? Like oh. the best of who they are. Um, and we do that by focusing on what I consider the three main pillars of wellness, which are um, spiritual wellness, mental wellness, and physical wellness. So yes. we have like, you know, the meditation corner where you can like have some drop in meditation. We offer tools and resources to help you virtually to, you know, get your mind right, get your spirit right. We have the herbs and, you know, spa, spa products to help you with the body and the physical ailments that you may address. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, we have Yoni Steaming, which... If y'all don't know what yoni steaming is, I'm gonna just pause and say that yoni steaming is life. Right. It is life. literally life. a spa day for your vajayjay. Like, come on, come on, <laughs> like, come on, educate. We get we get our nails done, we get our hair done, we get a massage. That's cool, but it's something about mm -hmm. sitting on that golden throne, that nice, you know, because it's golden over here at the Hidden Joanna's Boutique. Yes. Okay, and really like just pampering yourself. It is a holistic well wellness treatment. Mm -hmm. um used to you know address issues in the reproductive system used to help you know uh align yourself to release some things you know sever some ties which we'll talk about later and um it's just an amazing way to just relax and pamper yourself yes i'm so here for it and you're absolutely right i have not had the pleasure of going to javon shop yet but when she educated me on how i can do it at home I got the herbs from her. Now, listen, real quick, ladies, let me help y'all out. And this is not just because this is my sister, queen, friend, home girl, boo thing. Mm -hmm. This is because I support quality. I support integrity. I support, you know, folks who are genuine and really here to help and serve. So there's a lot of people all of a sudden trying to do this and creating herbs, but they're not. Talk about it, sis. Okay. They okay. are not going to be the same type of herb combination that she knows because I've watched her with notebooks spread out studying for you. So make sure y'all hit her up. Tell them about how they can um, order your products to do the steaming at home if they're not in the South Carolina area. Absolutely. And before I get into that, because I never want people to think that, you know, I'm just saying this to, to get people here at the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique, right? You don't have to get your herbs from me. I mean, mm -hmm. we appreciate the coinage. However, there are people out there who do have quality products and services. One thing to look for, though, is the contents of the steam blends, right? So people think that you can just be like, oh, red raspberry helps tone your uterus and... I don't know, sage is, um, you know, detoxifying. So you can just throw them in together, not realizing that different herbs have different properties, right? Like some mm. may be cooling, some may be tonics, some may, um, you know, help the flow and circulation while some may cause you to stop bleeding. Oh, okay. And so then your body is all out of whack because people are just throwing herbs in a pot and not understanding. Oh. So really do your research and your due diligence before, even if you, you know, create your own blends at home, before you start throwing stuff in the pot. Mm -hmm. With that being said, we do use all organic herbs. My blends are custom made in house. And like Tima said, I have been researching for years and I still, you know, critique and, and make changes. Um, but we do carry everything that you need at home to steam from the steam pot, which 
is stainless steel. Sisters, can I just say, if anybody is trying to tell you to steam with plastic, run. They <laughs> don't know what they're talking about. Pretty much. Okay? Yeah. Beloved goddesses, because that's what I like to think we all are. Amen. Queens, diamonds, okay? <laughs> if they tell you you can use your toilet, I'm going to need you to run because they right. know what they're talking about. Get okay? About you. Get about you. So <laughs> It's not going to work. Have, yes, we do have um, portable steam stools. We have the you know steam chairs. We have everything that you need that can be found on our website, www.hiddenjewelboutique.com. Come. Y'all heard that. Okay. Yes. Okay. Excellent. Well, listen, I want to jump into our topic, but before I do, I do want to head to the comments. I want to see who's in the building, who's here with yes. the hustle and shiners, the hustlers and the shiners. All right, we got Melly Mel. Hey Diamond. I see you, sis. Lexi. She says, share. Tiffany. What's up, Tiff? Cousin Christina, how you doing, Queen? All right, we got a lot of people here. Thank y'all so much for joining tonight and for sharing the live link. We will definitely come back in a little bit and we're gonna both pick one winner each. So let's jump into our first topic. Mm -hmm. You kind of already touched on it, you know, high level, but I'd love for you if you can to kind of maybe share some key points as to why women have to start making their womb, their womb health a priority. Because I know it's something that, I didn't do the great. And when I, and let me just let me just say this first. I'm not talking about sexual partners only. Right. We think if we're not active and we don't have a bunch of partners that we're yeah. taking care of. Our, no, some people still use douche. I can't believe that. I mean, it's 2021. Have you not seen all the exposés? Why are we still using that? Some yeah. of us still wash with soap. You cannot put so okay. Some of us ain't seen the OBGYN since it's seen us at birth. My God, okay. are we going there? Okay, hold on. I'm, look, this is Natima Sheree. I only go there. I, I know. Look, I know. I don't, let, 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 let me get comfortable. Let me, let me, you know. Yes. You know, I got one destination to go there. That's what I do <laughs> because I, I believe it's necessary. Because if not, we'll keep thinking stuff like this is cute. Like, oh, me and my girls got a Yoni Steam. Yay. But you have to understand what you're doing, how you're Absolutely. helping your body. Um, so I want to hear the sex benefits. Mm -hmm. I know we want to hear the sex benefits. My engineer over here, yes. uh, my husband, um, but definitely the health benefits. And, right. You know, seriously. So go ahead and educate, educate the ladies, the hustlers and the shiners. OK, well, because I don't want to assume that we're all on the same page, I really just want to start by talking about what it means when I say womb health, womb wisdom. Right. Because as you have pointed out, um, there are so many different things that come to mind that it can be confusing. Yeah. So first things first, when we talk about the womb space, we're talking about. In, in, in what we do here at the Hidden Jewel Wellness Boutique and what I believe. When I talk about the womb space, I'm not just talking about your vagina, you know, your um, sexual reproductive organs and all of those things. I'm, I'm also talking about the energetic space as well. Teach. So our womb space, and I'm, I get excited and I talk fast, so I'm slow down so that y'all can really catch it. Our womb space, right? What women have, what we were given divinely at birth, the thing that makes us unique and why we should never try to be men, okay? Um, Go there. Is because <laughs> we were giving our wombs, right? The womb is connected to our sacral chakra. Now, men have sacral chakras. We all do. And if you don't know about the chakras, go research. We ain't got time to go all this right now. Um, but for women, the sacral chakra is where we house our emotions, where we hold like our sexual identity, our creativity, yeah. um, who we are, everything that we've experienced, every sexual partner that we've had, every time that we've allowed ourselves to not trust our instinct, um. all of that is housed in our womb space, in our sacral chakra. Uh. So w when you have gone through life at whatever age you are tonight, and you haven't identified, connected with, honored, acknowledged your womb space, you don't know what's going on. Oh. And so while like you're gorgeous and you're flawed and you're all these things and you're stacked and you're educated because all that is important, the very core of who you are, the essence of who you are, how you show up, how you um, are able to create life physically, um, energetically, all of those things, is is hindered because you're not operating from a place of wholeness and uh, connection and alignment. What? 
Okay. Y'all thought I was playing. Okay. Y'all thought I was so, playing tonight. <laughs> I when I, okay. So when we talk about understanding and, and tapping into your womb wellness, right? It's really knowing who you are. Like that's mm -hmm. all that it is. It's paying attention to every little thing about you. I can't tell you how many women come and they're like, I just want a Yoni steam to get my menstrual cycle together. Oh, okay. When was your last period? Um, you know, oh, well, what is your cycle length like? Oh. Um, or they say, you know, for some reason, I just can't, you know, get an orgasm like that. And so oh. I say, okay, well, let's talk about that. Are you really into your partner? Well, are you, are you connected? Are you there? Oh. Are you, do you even know what you like? Connected, not attached. Real quick. I just, no, I just okay. What, I saw opportunity. I just, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Because that's a difference. Amen. There's a we'll difference. We'll go more that later. Because. Yes. Um, and so, like, the, the wisdom part, the wellness part, the knowledge part is knowing who you are and, and um, paying attention to the cycles, the flows. And again, not just the physical, but the energetic as well. Understanding that there may be a time of the month, like it's the new moon tomorrow. Around this time of the month, I got energy. Catch mm -hmm. me on the full moon, I ain't doing nothing. <laughs> That's my cycle, okay? I've learned yes. how to adjust and to flow as I need to. All yes. of that comes from womb wellness and understanding um, who I am and, and how to operate from a healthy womb space mm -hmm. so that I can create the life that I want. Yes. And see, that's that's the key word right there, sis. Creation. Yes. I love how I remember you taught me this years ago. You said when your womb space is healed, mm -hmm. the rest of you has no choice but to align with that. We think that if you're physically fit and you're physically in shape, that everything else is going to align. And it's the complete opposite. We have to work from the inside yes. out yes. in order to create. So I absolutely love that. That's a whole word. That's a whole gem. It's life um, force energy. That's all your womb space is, life force energy. And mm. so how can you try to like create anything? How can you try to manifest, speak life, uh, have faith or whatever, if you're not connected to the life force energy that is within you? Right. Like you're searching for something outside of yourself, a person outside of yourself to bring you happiness, to bring you riches, to bring you whatever you want. And the very core of, of what you have and who you are and what allows you to create you have no connection to, you have no awareness of. Like that's yes. just, that's ass backwards, sis. That's it is. Cool. And when you hear the, the the trends and the phrases and the comments about self-love and self-love and self-love, I always have to point back to self-awareness. Do that's you it. know who you are to even love who you are? Mm -hmm. Do you know who you are to even like who you are? You know what I'm saying? Because there's levels to this thing. Yes. Knowing yes. who you are, you can identify what you like. When you like yourself, you can then build, you know, what you love. I remember I did an exercise with a group of women and I said, what do y'all like about yourself? No one can answer the question. I said, tell me one thing about yourself. One thing about you that makes you unique. They could not answer the question. And so, like you said, in order to heal from the inside out, you first have to know who you are. That's how you're going to recognize what's broken. That's how you're going to recognize what's been lost. You're going to recognize what's there that doesn't belong. So tell us um, about some of the benefits in terms of after you've done multiple steaming, what can we recognize that is going to start to change in us emotionally and physically? Absolutely. So because Yoni steaming is a holistic wellness treatment, right, it's going to elevate you and you're going to see changes in your mind, body and spirit. Um, which is why I just have to say this here. We don't serve alcohol when you get a Yoni steam. I know on TV it's cute to like be sipping your wine and we, you know, sipping right now. But when you're trying to heal something, whether it be physically, mentally or spiritually, you don't want anything to inhibit the process or the um, mm -hmm. ability to heal. Right. Mm -hmm. So after and some women like everybody is different. So some women see a change after your first Yoni steam. Other mm -hmm. women, you know, it takes a couple of times because, you know, Rome wasn't built overnight. Right. Um, one of the things that you can you can notice is a clear state of mind. Right. Mm -hmm. Because when you're steaming. Um, especially when done properly. And, you know, again, I got to toot my own horn because that's just who I am and what I do. We bring in the elements of creation, right? And so we have, you know, the water, the air, the earth, 
And when you bring in all of those aspects and you tap into, again, the creator within you, it's able to, or you're able to unlock different as aspects of yourself. Mm. And so there is, um, just like with the, the physical flow, you know, some things, maybe if you had some old menses or some old bacteria lying dormant after some steams, you know, you get to see things flowing, your cycles aren't as heavy. It's the same thing in the spiritual or the energetic wow. realm. Cause some people wow. like, about those terms, but you begin to see like creativity flow. You begin to see peace flow. You begin to see you know, all these things. And not to mention, because, you know, let's just be real. Sex after a Yoni steam is amazing. <laughs> okay? Like, let's go. Let, let, can, can we just pause for a second? Because can that's we? what people really want to know. All right? Like, yes. how are you going to get my snap back? Yeah. Um, let's talk about the added moisture. Let's talk about how you're able to, you know, because you got steam. On your JJ, your vulva, your lips, you know. And so the blood now is flowing. It gets enlarged. That's when you become aroused. First time I had a Yoni steam, sis. Matter of fact, I think I told you about it. I'm walking around the mall like, y'all feel that? God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my own self happy just walking. Hello. <laughs> Let's go. Okay. And Let's go. Because, you this know, is Yes, the snapback mm -hmm. is, is real. The added moisture, it's just amazing. And then, of course, because you're connecting with yourself, you're learning yourself, you're able to tap in and really feel everything. Like, it's just all about connection and oneness. Mm, that's, that's, that's good. That's good. And it's, it seems so simplistic, but it's so good. That's so good. So I really want, real quick, want to see if there's any co uh, questions in the comment section. Okay. If anybody has any questions, I know that's right, Colleen. If y'all going to speak, speak the truth. Yes. Oh, yes. Lord. So Morpheus speaks, my husband says, us together, sex benefits. I love it. I'm laughing at his comments. <laughs> that's why I was chuckling. I love it. I love it. And then, like I said, Colleen says, if y'all going to speak, speak the truth. Yes, mm -hmm. sis. That's what we're here to do. We, tr yes. we, we try to help. We try to help. Shaiva says, oh gosh, Morpheus with the eyes. I cannot. And then Shaiva says, yes, Javon Frazier. Come on, ain't she teaching? Ain't she teaching? Shout out to the bestie. Yes, yes. Shout out to the bestie, Shai. And let me say one thing too before we move on about Yoni steaming, because it really is, it's in the power of the steam and it's in the power of the herbs. So I, in my excitement, I forgot to talk about the actual like technicalities and the process of it because mm -hmm. some people may be thinking, well, and I've heard it before, like, well, you, you can't get the steam up to, you know, your vagina or up to your, you know, ovaries or your uterus. That's not what we're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So picture it. You're sitting over the steam, right? The, um, the, the steam from the boiling water, because we're using boiling water now, beloved, okay, let, let it cool off some. All right, don't just hop up on it. You're gonna burn yourself. You only get one, but JJ be good to her. So, <laughs> so the, Treat steam, right. <laughs> the steam opens your pores, right? And so the benefits of the herbs are going to get into your um tissue surrounding your vagina. It's just like when you steam a pot of herbs for tea or you you know do a facial steam with herbs our skin is our lar largest organ right mm -hmm. and so we observe everything that's why you got to be careful about the lotions you put on the colognes all of that stuff chemicals mm -hmm. get another interview we'll talk about that later um so when you're steaming the herbs are steeping in the pot you add the boiling water the steam opens up your pores. The vapor carries the benefits of the herbs into like all of the tissues surrounding your whole vaginal area. So like if you have hemorrhoids, if you have fibroids, if you wow. have, you know, scar tissue, the steam itself is going to help with that. Wow. And then once the benefits of the herbs gets into your tissues, that mm -hmm. gets into your bloodstream. And that's how the actual herbs take effect to your reproductive system. So you can use it for anything high blood pressure, whatever, because it's all in wow. the earth shoes, right? And so it's not just like, because some women may be like, oh, well, I don't have, you know, a cycle anymore. I don't have a uterus anymore. It doesn't work for me. Yes, it does. If you have mm -hmm. high blood pressure, you know, some herbs that 
you know, deal with that, we'll help you in the yoni steam. Mm -hmm. If you can't relax and, you know, you want to throw in some lavender and some roses and some chamomile to help you go to sleep, yoni steam can definitely help with that too. Wow. You better come on and teach. You better come on with this this facts and information. I, I might know a little something, something about this stuff. You know, you know a lot of something, something, and I'm here for all of it. Okay? I'm here for all of it. Yeah. So, what I want to do now, I want you to pick well, actually, Morpheus is going to help us pick our engineer for the night. Shout out to the Bay again to pick someone to get our first Wind Down Wednesday Hustle and Shine prize box. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's see. Scroll, scroll, scroll. Only, only if they say roll, share. Roll, roll your Girl, only if they say share. Yeah, make sure y'all share it because if y'all don't want that box, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we are going with Medina Seven. Thank you so much, sis. I've known this girl since, oh my God, I want to say third grade, second or third grade. Thank you so much for joining the live. Thank you for sharing it. And you, my dear, have one of our Wednesday Wind Down gift boxes coming to you. So make sure that you DM me. <laughs> my dad said, me, me, me. <laughs> Shout out to my dad, Kevin Harrison. Thank you, daddy, for always supporting. But Medina, you got a box coming to you, sis. So I'm going to DM you after the show to make sure that I get your address and you're going to get this dope gift box. It's a lot of great things in there. I only highlighted the wine glass because I have it in front of me and then the book is behind me. But we put a couple of things in there for you to wind down with us on our next episode. All right. With that said, sis. Tell the folks how they can reach you either to schedule a Yoni theme or any of your other um, services or how they can order your products and how can they just reach you and support you? Absolutely. So on the web, we are at www.hiddenjewelboutique.com. All things social media to follow the business is Hidden Jewel Boutique with just the Q at the end. Um, and then for me personally, it is Javon A. Frazier. Now, to um, book an appointment, you know, either here or virtual, depending on what you need. If you want to get, like, the steam kit because you're not local, we do um, ship that, you know, all over. And you also get a virtual, like, appointment with me via Zoom. And so I help you set up your sacred space. I help you, you know, make sure that you boil in the herbs right. Because to me, it's not just enough that you are getting a Yoni steam. Like, I really want you to have the whole holistic experience and to set up yeah. your own healing sanctuary because that's what we have here in the back. I love it. I love it. And for your, those of you who did not see her interview, um, I think it was a few weeks ago that you posted it. Please visit her page. Check out her shop. It's amazing. I cannot wait to visit. Get my Yoni steam. I want my facials. I, yes. want, I want the conversation. No, I want I to learn it. how to find my sacred space. So mm -hmm. thank you so much for that info. So since we're about to transition to the next topic, Let's I'm go. really excited to talk about this because... But, but, okay, Let's I don't go. even know what to say. I don't even know what to say. So I do want to share an article that I read because y'all know me. I study to show myself approved. I don't just get on here to talk. I don't just get on here to show off my little hair, my frontal. I actually want to bring you information that you can apply. And so in, in my research, this I came across this article um, and I just want to read a piece of it. But she says... Um, the explanation that she gave as a soul tie is imagine gluing two leather belts together, then ripping them apart. Pieces of leather will be stuck to the opposite of each belt. The concept of soul ties is similar. Connecting with someone sexually will leave some of that, that person's spirit with you, whether good or bad. And the more sexual connections you have with different people, the more a bit of each person is left with you and pieces of yourself become a part of them. So even if the sexual relationship is short-lived, the soul tie becomes perpetual. Pause for reaction. You Like, no, seriously. No, 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 we gonna sit. We gonna sit. Lie. Cause look, a lot of folks about to exit, honey. A lot, and that's fine, That's but we gonna talk about it anyway. Cause mm -hmm. I'm, 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 we not playing, we, we trying to help. 
Yes. We try to help. So yes. we can help them what to do physically mm -hmm. and spiritually mm -hmm. and emotionally. Now we're going to help you understand what your decisions are doing to your body and your because spirit. Because it's all connected. Because there are connected. consequences. So, sis, tell us, you know what I'm saying, tell us your definition of soul ties. When someone asks you about that during a consultation, you know, what are you explaining about that? It's interesting because it's pretty much the same thing that you just read. When I talk about soul ties, everything is an exchange. And mm -hmm. I don't know if you remember years ago, sis, before I even got into womb wellness, I did a live on Facebook talking about the value in the exchange. Mm -hmm. Because every time we, con we come in contact with someone, our vibe, our aura, our energy, our spirit, um, there's always some sort of exchange, whether good, whether bad, whether they're taken from you or, you know, depositing in you. There is something. Mm -hmm. And so when you engage in sexual activity with someone, mm -hmm. okay, because I, I, I have to tell you, beloveds, who think that it's just sex, it is so much more. It is a line right there energy exchange mm -hmm. your vajayjay your vagina your hot box whatever you call it your honey pot whatever her name is that is your sacred portal mm. so anytime that you allow someone to kneel before the throne enter into the garden you know how many licks can it take to get to the <laughs> <laughs> All right. yeah. yeah. You are allowing someone to enter into your sacred portal and they're leaving something and they're taking something. something. There's some, but even when you think of the the act of sex, when you think of you know what that looks like from a physical standpoint, it's exactly the same in the spirit. You have two individuals that are coming together that are connecting for a time and then are being ripped apart. So there's still gonna be pieces. And then when you think about it, a man deposits into a woman. I was just about to say, don't let them leave nothing. Don't let them yeah. drop nothing off. Don't let them fertilize the garden because then that's a whole, now you got offspring. Okay, Honey. you don't even got to be physical. Come on. I told now you I should be why. You know, you know how they talk about couples who've been together for a long time. They start looking alike. Looking alike. That's because mm -hmm. you're exchanging DNA. Like yes. you're now becoming a part. And I got to say, because it's not just, you know, male and female because, hey, my baby, um, <laughs> they are now out to the day. <laughs> right, right. They are now depositing a part of themselves into you, a part mm -hmm. of their DNA. So you literally become a part of that person. Mm -hmm. And you think about, oh God, I thank God that I have severed those ties. But mm -hmm. in my in my um in my unawareness, right, and in my my ignorance. Think mm -hmm. about all the times that Javon Antoinette Frazier has just had meaningless, you know, encounters. Mm -hmm. And then the people that they've had meaningless encounters. With, and then those people. And then that part. It's, like it's like a sexual Rolodex. Like yes. you just got backlog and backlog. Yes. And you ain't did no check-in. You don't know nothing. But here's the thing. Here's the thing with soul ties where I try to help women to recognize mm -hmm. you, in fact, are suffering from a soul tie. You in a good mood. And all of a sudden, you're not. That ain't your energy. That's the energy of, that you was with that person or whomever it was. Or you normally don't, you normally wouldn't react to something a certain way. You normally, and here's the thing, I was doing research and the, the young lady who wrote this article and I didn't even say her name, but she said she was dating someone who was allergic to tree nuts. And then all of a sudden she was having reactions to tree nuts. I was like, you got to be kidding me. Oh no, it's that's it's how wrong. deep this is. Yes. Like, and yeah. again, I can share because I'm in a, you know, committed relationship. Yes. Like there were times when I didn't have like, I didn't burp all the time or I didn't mm -hmm. have like IBS. When I tell you I'm starting to develop symptoms of IBS, I'm looking at her like, I never <laughs> used to burp like this before. But you, you know what I'm saying? And it's like, we don't yeah, think yeah. about it that way. Not only do we start thinking like the person, not only do we start, you know, talking like the person or, or, or let... <sighs> Let's go there. Not only do we start responding or reacting in the way that that person probably would have responded or reacted, but now you're taking on their physical traits and qualities as well. Yes, yes. And let's say this: it's not always negative. Uh -uh. You know what I'm saying? It, it's I was not, right there. Yeah. It's not yeah. always negative. Yeah. But if you're not mindful and you you're not aware, then mm -hmm. you and 
if you're not connected to your womb space to know even what's yours to begin with, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you don't know if it's negative or if it's positive or if it's exactly. even worse. And then you won't be able to recognize it. Yes. And I, I always look at it, you wouldn't let just anyone in your home. Mm -hmm. You wouldn't let just anyone watch your kids. You wouldn't let just anyone drive your car. But you letting anybody between your legs, I just don't understand that. And so, and I'm not judging nobody because since I was there, hello, oh, hello, I've been there. Jules was a stripper. Jules I've been there, and I know my parents are going. Sorry, parents, I, but I've been there. Right, right. Got to be real. But it wasn't until, like you said, I became self-aware, began to operate in consciousness that I said, you know what? No, I have to be just as careful. Mm -hmm. Screening process. I got to be just as um, what's the word I'm looking for? Diligent, my due diligence that I would if I was screening somebody for a job, if yeah. I was screening a, screening a babysitter, mm -hmm. I need to know what you react like. What's your temper like? What's your temperament like? What's your mentality like? How do you think about things? Do you have anger issues? Those mm -hmm. things do matter. It's more than you just find. You just, you know what I'm saying? Blessed. It, it, it's so much more than that. We have to literally be conscious of the people that we're inviting into that sacred space that you referred to. Right. And then when they're gone, you have to, one, let your bed cool off, sis. But then you also have to give yourself an opportunity to break those soul ties. You have to do the work to say that relationship is over. I need to sever all of that. And you know what I'm saying? And heal. Because we don't, first of all, we don't recognize that when there's a brokenness in the relationship, that does break you because a yes. part of you left with them. Mm -hmm. So you need to heal that. And then, like you said, you need to give yourself time to cleanse and to clear out and to heal whomever was just in that space with you. And so that's something, I'm sorry, I'm looking at the comments cracking up. Me too. I'm laughing, I'm laughing, at, at, your husband. Husband. I'm laughing at your husband. He was cracking yeah. me up right now. Crazy. <laughs> But okay, so let me let me say this because I really have to break it down again. Elementary, even if no one has told you today, beloved, please allow me to be the first. You are carrying something sacred. Uh -huh. There is nobody else on this planet that has your JJ, your womb space, your your hidden jewel is what we call it. That's where the name comes from. There's mm -hmm. no one else that has what you have. And even if, you know, you, <laughs> even if you may think, well, I went through this thing or, you know, you don't deserve more. Beloved, there's only one. There's only one of what you have. And so you have to protect it at all costs. And yeah. here's the thing about treasure, right? And I thought about this as I was preparing and getting in the space uh, for tonight. When you think about the hidden jewel, you think about treasure, right? Go back to when we're kids and, and, there's like a, a pirate's map, right? Mm -hmm. To find the hidden treasure. You have a map that everybody is fighting over. And you, unless you have this map, you can't even get close to where the treasure is buried. You right. first have to find the map, all right? And you got to go through everybody else who is trying to fight over this one map to get right. to this treasure, wherever it may be. So you get the map, you find the treasure, but then you also have to make sure you have the key. Mm -hmm. because the map does you no good if you don't have the key to unlock that treasure. Come on. And so many of us are walking around. Not only are we requiring people to have the map because we're showcasing where mm. the treasure is buried wow. in the name of reclaiming what it means to be a woman and in the name of taking back the power. And again, we're not judging because I was the same way because I was yes. raised as a child. I felt like as an adult, I'm going to give it to whoever I want to because that's my right and that's my power. Not realizing that no, baby, you still have no power. You right. know what I mean? You still are devaluing yourself. That so we're not even requiring people to have the map. And then we giving them the key. We telling everybody exactly what we want on our social media pages and our stories that we sharing. All we do is look on your news feed and they're going to know the kind of fly what you like, what you want him to say, how you want her to look. What kind of words you want? You know what I'm saying? Because uh -huh. we're not keeping anything sacred. Uh -uh. Like, and uh -uh. we need to go back to truly understanding what it means to be sacred, baby girl. If nobody has told you today, that map don't belong to everybody. Everybody yeah. should have access to know how you work it and how you. Why would a man or woman need to work to gain you? If they can look on TikTok and see what that mouth do with the cucumber challenge. Come on. 
Come on, like, that part. Let's just be real about it. In real you life. I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Why, why should I have to look forward to what it would be like, you know, to kneel before your throne if I can look on TikTok and see all your curves and silhouette in the silhouette challenge. Like what? Like what? I got What I got to work for? Facts, facts. And when you when you challenge that thinking, because that's the norm, mm-hmm. right? That's the trend. That's what's popular. What I find to be so unpopular is thinking for yourself. I'm always yeah. talking about free thinkers are some of the most hated. You know what I'm saying? People on the planet, because when you don't agree or you don't follow the trend or you don't subscribe to the school of thought, something's wrong with you. Yes. People don't realize different is a blessing, not a curse. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And when you, you I think she said it on an episode of Queens I was watching the other day. Brandy's character, Naomi, said that to her daughter. She was like, what people recognize as different, they really mean it's bad. And that's just not true. That's not true. So like you said, if, if Blue can come to your page and every one of your selfies is ass first, but then you preach it about how you want to be respected. Come on. You want people to, to recognize you for your brain and your creativity and your boss mentality, but that's not what you're displaying. Right. And that actually is about to lead us to our next topic because I want to make sure we have some time to talk about that, sis. Mm-hmm. You want to stick around with us for one more topic? Oh, uh, Listen, you know, that's what Let's we go. do. <laughs> Let's go. But I, re- I really wanted to talk about this. And when I was studying, you know, to prepare for this show, I said to myself, what else would go well with this and align with this messaging without being offensive, without, you know what I'm saying, um, making people second guess themselves, but say, not second guess yourself, but look at yourself. And there's a yes. difference. Yes. Second guessing yourself is when you're already confident in what you know about yourself. And then someone comes along and makes you doubt that. Mm-hmm. But looking at yourself is saying, huh. Maybe I am wrong for that. It's completely different. An introspective view of self says, I want to do better. Second guessing yourself says, damn, I was doing good, but now I don't want to try anymore. So I just wanted to clarify that because my goal is not to make you second guess yourself. It's to make you look in the mirror and say, hmm, is what Tima and and your guiding light said true? Mm -hmm. Do I need to make some changes in these areas to get different? Because I'm telling you, queen. When I started to make those internal changes and shift my mentality oh, and you know what I'm saying, change the way I allow people in my space, not even just sexually, in my space, period, period. Energetically, mentally, emotionally, I was cutting folks off. I was yeah. cutting off those relationships. I was severing those ties. And it opened me up to find someone that I don't have to worry about some of those things with. So anyway, with that said, y'all see it on the screen. I want to talk about sexual objectification. This is such an issue for me, raising two daughters. Mm -hmm. I have two little girls. And what made me think about this subject, honestly, I'm about to give some more love to my husband. Y'all know I'm always trying to find a reason to show him some love. But we were at dinner and a um, reggaeton song came on. And so I started to move. And Amaya was like, what's that, mommy? I said, oh, that's that Latina. That's how you move your hips to this kind of music. Mommy will teach you that. Husband looked across the table. He's like, no, you won't. I was like, what? But why not? Like, that, that's we grew up dancing like that. He goes, no, she, she don't need to learn none of that. And I didn't realize at the moment until I started to study how those little things really do build that standard for our little girls. And then you post the pictures of your daughter in her bathing suit. And then you post the pictures of your daughter with her hands on her hip. And then you know what I'm saying? Like, all of those things is they become little girls who do it. Then there are young women who do it. Then there are grown women who do it. And then they're in their late 30s, not married, and trying to figure out why am I not attracting the right man? Well, let's right. replay the videotape. Right. You decided to dress a certain way in the name of liberation and freedom. That part. Talking about self-love. I can look like this, but you don't even realize that you're objectifying yourself. That part. And that's the thing that hurts, sis. It's not even men as much anymore. It's not even media. We're doing it to ourselves in the name of reclaiming our power and femininity. And yeah, yeah. And it's painful. It's, it's, to it's so funny that you brought. Yeah, it, it is. It is. It's so funny that you brought that up because I have to shout out my mother. Um, My mom always said, if I give you everything now, what do you have to look forward to? Mm. My mom did not let me play in makeup or fake nails. 
Like we had certain things that we can do, but it was always levels to it. And when I evolved or got older or whatever, then I was exposed to something else. Mm -hmm. And I appreciate her for doing that because I look at some of my friends who, or some people that I was acquainted with or, or knew back in the day who had everything just given to them early and yeah. Uh -huh. You know, no, no shade, but yeah, it shows. It, it shows. shows. Right. Um, and, and it's interesting because like you said, it's not even anyone else doing it to us anymore. It's, it's, it's us. I would never forget. And this is not, you know, calling this queen out because I love her and I think all women are beautiful, but I remember, I think it was Cardi B who had like a BET performance or some kind of performance. And like beloved was just out here showing and twerking and dropping and like, it was a lot. Mm -hmm. And I remember reading when they were like, pretty much comparing her to like a role model for like young girls to look up to. And mm. I just was like, how sway? But why though? But why now though? at 30, you know, five, yeah, I can look at you and be like, yes, girl, teach me something. But I don't want, you know, my five-year-old niece or whatever looking at her and being like, oh yeah, look what I can do. Like, no, no. And it is a way. And again, going back to what I said earlier, it is a way to be sexy and to be sensual and to be all of those things mm -hmm. and still be sacred. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Like, it is a way to be like, my God, like dropping jaws and turning heads without showing everything. Like everything. And 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 again, because I love the, when you brought up the word introspection, because you know that's that's my thing. Mm -hmm. um, I always say introspection and reflection bring a moment of clarity to any situation. Mm -hmm. So I would dare say that for women who feel that they need those things, that they need to, you know, have their ass out, their thighs out, they, like everything. What is it that you're trying to make up for or overcompensate right. for? Right. What is it that you're trying to hide by exposing all of you? Right. What is it that you're crying out for? What is it that you're lacking, beloved? Uh -huh. And I know somebody's gonna be like, "Oh, I'm good. I'm good." Because when I be when I became aware of who I am, and again, ex stripper, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh -huh. even as a dancer, there was still a limit that I did not go to. I uh -huh. never went to any I, any clubs where like I couldn't keep my T bar on. And if you don't know, the T bar is a thong. Any uh -huh. clubs where I couldn't keep that little strip of dignity on wasn't mm. for Javon mm -hmm. because even on the pole even as a stripper exotic dancer being able to maintain that little strip of dignity over my alpha and omega is what i used to call it back in the day made me feel like at least i'm not showing everything it made mm -hmm. me feel like i still kept something sacred for me you know right. what i'm saying mm -hmm. and so as you become aware of yourself you realize that like you're too valuable for that. You, right. you you don't have to you don't have to show everything. And don't get me wrong, women are sexual, they are sensual, they are playful, they are, you know, nurturing, they are warrior. Like women are so amazing, complex simplicity. Y'all, we the shit. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fact. Um, pause. So are men, but we're talking about women right now. <laughs> that we can be all things, but we don't have to expose everything. That's right. We're not saying don't be sexual. Right. We're not saying don't be free. Right. But just understand that there is a time and a place for everything. And mm -hmm. understand, like, why you're really doing what you're doing. Because everything Absolutely. has a point. Everything. Absolutely. And if you really pay attention to the shift that happened in media, right? Because when I was growing up, the examples of sexy, attractive, you know what I'm saying? Powerful. They were fully clothed. Yes. I never saw any of the iconic characters mm -hmm. on television naked ever. Yep. Ever. You know, what I'm thigh, never, like, mm -hmm. exactly. If you, and here's the thing Janet Jackson was one of the biggest sex symbols of the 90s. Mm -hmm. In most of her videos, she's mostly dressed. Like what she has on was like a tank top and some high waist jeans and boots. Right. Mm -hmm. Mariah Carey, same thing. I was literally going through old school videos. Mm -hmm. Olivia, SWV, all of those dope women were completely covered. Yeah. Their sex appeal was in their talent. 
their sex appeal was in their, you know what I'm saying, in their mind, their ability to articulate their their confidence. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to figure out where did the shift happen? When did the, when did society, media, the world, men, women say you're not good enough unless you're naked? I was looking on um, Fashion Nova, one of my favorite places to shop, right, for a dress to wear for my birthday, and I was so discouraged because literally everything looked like the thought superhero uniform. I was like, I cannot wear none of this. Same. Same. I was like, like, none of this is covering. And it's not because I'm a heavier woman. It's not because, you know what I'm saying, I got a little extra chichos. It had nothing to do. It's literally, I would be naked. Yeah. There was no, and I was like, this, this can't be, this can't be what it is. Mm -hmm. You have the clothing lines, you have media, you have men, but the worst is when I see women do it. I was looking at a, um, a viral video and it was about a young it was actually a viral post and it was about a young lady who showed up to a date in a dress that was very provocative very like revealing and it made the gentleman uncomfortable so he simply said would you mind going home and wearing something and changing into something more appropriate for this restaurant that i'm taking you to on our first date right she went off on the brother this is me. This is self-love. This is who I am. I'm accepting myself. You don't like it. You don't have to date me. It's plenty of men at that bar that would love to buy me a drink and take me home. That's where your value is, sis. Your ability to get men to notice you physically and then be upset when, when the physical parts of you are no longer fun and the physical parts of you are no longer interested and he's on to the next because there's nothing to sustain his attention. But then we pray for different. We try to do spells for different. Right. We try to, we try, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, I just, I don't understand it. I do not mm -hmm. understand it. And here's what I think it is. And you know, sis, because we've had private conversations for years. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think somewhere along the line, like, of trying to fight for equality and the feminist movement, I think we lost our way. Yes. I think in trying to prove that we have control over our bodies, that we are no longer, you know, being subjected to what you think we should wear and what you think we should do. And we're no longer conforming to your standards that we lost any sense of standard. Right. And it's really sad. And then because everywhere you look, influencers, social media, magazines tell you that this is what is necessary or accepted right and we just all like you said earlier following the trend right and then if we do meet a brother who is like no 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 beloved like you're a queen you're a goddess blah, 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 we call him gay mm -hmm. come on or he what? a simp like what, or he what? A simp, sis. You know right what I'm saying? right exactly and it's just like what when did when did having when did having morals and values and standards and qualities become something wrong like right. we're <laughs> we have gotten to a place where we've accepted shit for so long that we call it chocolate come on come on those that's are, just what it is those are facts <laughs> those are facts and i always pose the question especially to my girlfriends you know who, who defend this mindset they defend this way of life they defend this you know what i'm saying this thing i'm just enjoying my life I'm just being free. I'm being who I am. I love myself. Would you love yourself any less fully clothed? Would you love yourself any less if you didn't dress that way or didn't, you know what I'm saying, take those types of selfies or post those kinds of pictures? Would you love yourself any less? Or is it really that you're trying to convince us and not yourself? That part. Because, honey, listen, I love a good shoulder. This is the sexiest part of my body, baby. Listen. You, you don't get you a good shoulder. Listen, <laughs> give a little shoulder, take it right back. I'm just saying. I feel the sexiest in a full skirt suit with some dope heels on. That's You can't tell me shit when I'm walking into the corporate office with the badass shoes, skirt suit, and my brief. What? Because Tell Cardi B come see me. I, listen, I will out-sexy any of y'all in this outfit because it's the confidence that makes you attractive. Can I say something, sis? Can yeah, I please. Something? All right. Please. I'm, I'm gonna just I'm gonna just say what it is for real. They don't got nothing else but their body, so that's what it is. It has been a lovely show tonight on the Hustle and Shine. Thank y'all for joining. Good night. Okay. No, seriously, we can, we can end the show right there. 
Like, I just, I just, I just, I just. You but know, here, like, let me add to that. It's not that they actually don't have it. They don't know what it is. Most yes, women yes. have no clue what's great about them. Right. I read an article because y'all know I read book enthusiasts that still exist. Uh -huh. I read an article that said 80% of people don't even know what their gifts and talents are. Mm -hmm. They don't even know what separates them from the rest of the world, mm -hmm. from the folks in their family, from the folks in their community. They have no idea what's great about them. Yeah. And so it's easier because we take the easy route. It's easier to use what we have physically because we don't have to do no work going inward. That's it. That's I don't have it. to look I don't have to look beyond the mirror and identify who I am as a woman because what I have on the outside is good enough. Yep. Not great, not excellent, but good enough. And so this is why when we break up with someone says we run into the gym, we working on the physical. We don't run the therapy. We don't run, no, I'm going, I'm going there real quick. We got a few minutes left and I'm going to just go there. Mm -hmm. We don't run the therapy. We don't run, you know what I'm saying? We don't even run the mama house for prayer. Like, no, we going straight to the gym because if I can physically get fit, somebody else will want me. But guess what? Now he got to deal with you. You physically fit, but you still emotionally bruised. You still spiritually scarred. Yep. You're still in broken pieces. Yep. And then you're wondering why that relationship is not working because you never take the time to do the work. Because I guarantee you, sis, when you do the work, you don't need to wear nothing sexy. You walking in the room, you're like, bitch, I'm here. What you mean? Baby, let me, let me tell you something about Javon A. motherfucking Frazier, okay? Like, after I really understood who I am, there is nothing you can tell me about me. You can talk about my past. Matter of fact, it's in a book called The Hidden Jewel. I tell you all my juicy secrets. Yes. So I'm so Top confident back. in who I am and the work that I have done. And mm -hmm. here's the example that I use. And I'm going to try to make it quick because I know we got to go. But it's like that, that that back room. You know, you go to your auntie's house and your, your auntie has that back room where she kind of just throws everything in. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Every Every holiday... Everything goes into that back room and you can't open that door. When company come, you just close that back room door. Mm. That's what we do with ourselves emotionally, our trauma, our womb space, right? And mm -hmm. so then what happens is we have a nervous breakdown or maybe we decide that we're, we're no longer wanting to be in the situation. So now we have to move and mm. now it's time to go into that dark room and start cleaning it out. Mm. And then when you clean out the room, you realize that you have this whole space that could be an office, that could be a sewing room, that could be wow. the whole room, hello. Wow. But because you didn't want to go do the work and go into that dark room, all mm -hmm. of that potential was untapped. Mm. We don't want to do shadow work. We don't want to go into the dark room. Because it hurts ourselves. and it's uncomfortable. Exactly. That's and why. It, and it's cute to talk about shadow work, you know, because that's what's hip now. It's what's trending, Everybody, especially in the month of October. Everybody's right. talking about shadow work. But did you really sit down mm -hmm. and go within yourself? Mm. Did you really talk about why you feel the need to dress a certain way or right. to have sex on the first date or to right. not require a gentleman to pick up the phone and call you to make plans instead of texting you? Yes, I watched your conversation last night, sis. Um, so did, you know, are you really doing those things? You know what <laughs> right. I mean? And so yes. that's what womb health really is about because- all of what we talked about tonight, the self-confidence, mm -hmm. the, mm -hmm. you know, sexual objectif uh, objectification, the soul ties, all of that comes from not going within and knowing yourself. Come on. You came to teach tonight and I'm here for it. I appreciate it so much. I want to quickly read Colleen's comment. It's, Hello, Diamond. That's one of my diamonds, y'all. Giving some love to the Diamond writers. But she says, or we're giving some broken brother everything we have left, not knowing that you have so much more. Come on, sis. That mm -hmm. right there. That right there, because we want to hold on to the person. We want that person to stay with us. We want that person to love us. And so we're willing to give them what we don't even have or what's broken. Like literally, like here, take it. This is what I have to offer. Great comment, Colleen. Thank you for may that. I, may I offer something to support somebody and to help somebody out who may be Please. dealing with that? That Please. also comes from not knowing yourself and operating out of a scarcity mindset. Mm. I was so afraid to let go of certain things because I thought that that was all that I deserved and that was all that was available to me. Not realizing mm -hmm. that by releasing my attachment to the outcome, there was so much more. Hello, Hidden Jewel 2.0. That on. was waiting on the other side. Yes. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Okay. When I let go of that toxic relationship where I was begging for attention and love, when I finally said, this is enough, I deserve better. 
Honey King that can't get enough of me. Okay, Hello, playing King. engineer tonight. That's how close he want to be to me on a regular basis. Don't say, listen. I'm trying to tell. I'm trying to help somebody. Yes, I'm trying to help somebody. It took the inner work, and it, it really is not comfortable. It's not. You know, I just want to shift and tell the ladies. We're not on here just to, you know, to to drop a bunch of criticisms and critiques and because mm -hmm. we've been there. We can talk about it because we were those women. We yes. can we can speak on it because we know we, we, we got the receipts. Right. I, I can play the videotape. I remember when I was in that space. And can I just say this to help somebody, too, because I hear this a lot. It's an ongoing journey. I may not deal with the things that we're talking about tonight anymore, but I still have things that I'm working through. And right. I think if more of us were able to have these open and honest conversations to say, you know what, sis, like, it's okay to work through that because not only have I gone through that, but now I'm going through this and I'm still standing. Yes. I'm still valuable. I'm still purposeful. You know what I'm saying? Like yes. the social media and this this society, what have you think that everybody is is like out here living and we we not. Like everybody going through something. Because we're not posting failure. We're not posting the failure. We only right. posting the good stuff, the cute stuff, the happy stuff. We're not posting when it hurts. We're not posting. I, I saw a, a writer that I really admire. She actually owns a bookstore in Philly. She posted a video of herself bawling, crying. I'm talking the ugly church cry. And she said the reason she held on to that video because she needed to show people the other side of entrepreneurship. And I so respected her for that. Because like you said, we show the happy relationships. Yes, I'm in a healthy relationship now. But it wasn't always like this. Right. Yes, I'm in a good headspace now. I've accepted my big bone, light skin self. I'm using the word big bone. Y'all know I ain't big bone. I just need to lose weight. But you know, I'm accepting that until I do the work. But I'll tell you this, I did the inner work. The work that I've done is sustainable. Yes. The character that I'm creating and the woman that I'm becoming, she's going to be sustainable. Yes. That's all it. of those other things are gone. And it's like when you clean out. I was packing to move here to Atlanta. My family and I relocated to Atlanta, right? And so I'm, I'm unpacking shoes and, and things. These are stuff that stayed in, in totes and boxes because I just didn't have the space for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm unpacking them and I'm, I'm digging them out and I'm un, like I'm unraveling things and I'm finding things. I'm like, I didn't even know this was back here. I don't need this anymore. I'm going to throw this out. And guess what? That made room for new things, stuff that I really wanted. And so it's the same thing with our lives. You got to unpack some of that stuff. What are those insecurities for real that got you dressed in a certain way? That has you doing cucumber challenges. That has you doing silhouette challenges. You know what I'm saying? Telling people what, what that mouth do. Telling people how you can back it up. Where is their value in any of that? Because when he don't want that no more than what? So I literally had to clean some things out. Give myself space to bring on the new, to make room in my life for what I said I really wanted. And it's the preparation. You know what I'm saying? You can't get certain stuff without without removing certain stuff. We can't get a new refrigerator until the old refrigerator was taken out. Right. We couldn't get a new bed until the old mattress and bed was thrown out. And it's no different with our lives. Some stuff just got to go. So I think my, my engineer is tapping me because he wants us to read another comment. Is that it? You just wanted to touch me. Okay, we're gonna read another comment anyway, babe. Find us some comments because I want to engage with the audience before we go. We're about to wrap it up. <laughs> Melly Mel, hey Diamond says, Where's the offer? I'm like, no, seriously, because Javon was preaching. Yes, she was. Your guiding light was Listen, dropping. Okay, we do say don't I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Cash app is no. Colleen says, Yes, Javon. That's yeah. what I'm talking about. I'm here for thank it. you. Thank you. Morpheus Speak says, is not comfortable and the work is never done as long as you're spiritually living, even when you get whatever you think you're looking for. Wow. That part. Wow. That's good. That's good. So on that note, oh, he got another one. Morpheus Speak says, and healthy doesn't mean perfect. Come on, somebody. Come on, because healthy don't mean skinny either. But you know, I just put that out there. Okay, mm -hmm. I just, I just, I'm just trying to piggyback off that comment. So, Javon, your guiding light. Before I let you go, are there any final comments, any gems and jewels you'd like to drop for the for the people before you go? <sighs> One of the things that I want to say that I, I live by and I want to share with you in case it supports you is that I want you to affirm that you are divinely held, guided, and supported. 
Mm. Right. And so the God that you serve, the universe that you serve, your spiritual team, your ancestors, whoever governs your life is there to cover you and protect you during your process of doing this work. Right. Because mm. this work is so necessary because you deserve to be happy, healthy and whole. Yes. And yes. you deserve what, whatever is on the other side. And what I want to say, too, is if anything that I've stated resonates with you and you were like, you know what, I might need to do some inner work. Um, you do not have to do it alone. We actually specialize in all of this that we were talking about tonight here at the Hidden mm -hmm. Jewel Wellness Boutique. We have womb wellness sessions, which is like this kind of conversation, but just on a personal note for your specific situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah. Oh, and also, I'm really happy to announce that today we just launched our Sacred Self Love virtual course so yes. we're talking about like how to love ourselves through the arts of sensuality sexuality uh pleasure and play we're talking meditation and masturbation we're talking yoni wands <laughs> we're talking like yeah we going there yeah i love it oh my god this is why i love you sis i swear <laughs> oh lord this is why i love you well, I cannot thank you enough for coming of and sharing course. your gems and your jewels you. with this dope ass platform. Thank um, you. Congrats, sis, from Colleen. It's a lot of love in the comments for you, sis. Please go back and review them later. I will. But I love you dearly. I so respect who you are, who you've become, and who you're becoming. I know the journey. I've been a part of the journey, and I honor you for doing the work. And thank you again for sharing that with with our squad, with our hustlers and our shiners. So Javon, one last time before we let you go, how can people reach you? How can they get in touch with you? One more time. Absolutely. On the website, www.hiddenjewelboutique.com. Social media, uh, Javon A. Frazier. And uh, Hidden Jewel Boutique with just the Q, not the UE, because it was taken on all social media platforms <laughs> i love it well since you continue to hustle and shine continue to be amazing continue to influence and you know we're gonna have you back on this show of course you just let me know i'm here for it i got you <laughs> thank you so much love sis. you love, love. You so much. love you, sis. all right y'all that was the very first episode of hustle and shine i am so excited Thank you for joining me. Thank you for listening. Thank you for staying for the entirety of the show. I know it was longer than an hour, but I felt like what was being shared was necessity. It was necessary. And so I hope that you enjoyed it. Join us next week. Our host, Jazzy Cash, is going to be in the building. I'm telling y'all, y'all don't want to miss next week. Y'all really don't. So join us. Same platform, but on Thursday. So join us next week, Thursday, for Jazzy Cash, who will be hosting her show. Talk to y'all soon, but continue to hustle and shine.